All right, so name of the reading is putting VAR to work. If you're reasonably comfortable with the first two readings on VAR, this should be relatively easy to handle. So let's get started. This is a summary of learning outcomes. So we look at linear, nonlinear derivatives. Then we learn to calculate VAR for linear derivatives. Delta normal approach to calculate VAR for nonlinear derivatives. Limitations of this approach. Then revaluation method for computation of VAR. Delta normal full revaluation approach for computing VAR. Then again, we look at Monte Carlo use in this section. Then correlation breakdown, worst case scenario. Okay, so let's start with linear and nonlinear derivatives. Those uh, derivatives which inherently have a asymmetric payoff. Those derivatives we would classify into nonlinear range. And those derivatives which will exhibit symmetry on both the sides, those would be referred to as linear derivatives. So you could put, uh, you can put forward contracts into linear segment. You can also put future contracts into the linear segment. In non linear, you can put option contracts because we know that they have a asymmetrical payoff. You can also put most of the credit derivatives not all of them but most of the credit derivatives into this segment. A derivative is described as linear when relationship between underlying factor and the derivatives value is linear in nature. Okay, So, so the way it works in uh, forward contract. For example, let us say you have a contract at a price of 100. Spot When the spot price turns out to be 100, payoff is 0. But if it increases by 10%, we have an increase of 10. If it becomes 120, we will have a value of 20. That means it is behaving in a linear fashion. A non-linear derivative's value is a function of change in the value of underlying asset and is dependent also on the state of the underlying asset. For example, uh, if you have a call option with a strike price of 100 and if the price of the underlying turns out to be 70, value is 0. 60, value is 0. 50, value is 0. But if it's 110, value is 10, 120, value is 20. So we have to also factor in the current state of the underlying asset. So that would be a non-linear derivative.